So the method in which you update your Hyundai's navigation system has somewhat changed over the years from being a paid mail service or having to take it to the dealership to now being a DIY process that you can do for free from the comfort of your own home. So today I'm going to show you guys how to update your Hyundai navigation system using the latest Hyundai software as well as show you some of the software interface differences here on a Gen 5 unit on this Elantra GT behind me. So the first thing you want to do is obviously make sure your vehicle can indeed be updated. Now Hyundai only provides um, the at-home updates for vehicles with the embedded or built-in navigation system from the factory. So if your vehicle does not have the built-in navigation, um, then you cannot perform the update. And Hyundai typically doesn't provide updates for vehicles without navigation, even if the dealer can do it. Um, but there are some recent uh, 2020 and newer vehicles um, that they call display audio, which do have updates that the dealer can perform uh, to fix some of the issues with the wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and other little things like that. But again, that has to be done uh, at a dealer level. Now, once you have verified that your vehicle can indeed be updated and has the built-in navigation, there are gonna be two different versions uh, used to update the head unit. One is going to be an SD card and the second is going to be a USB stick. Now, vehicles produced from uh, about I guess 2017 through 2019 or 2020 depending on the model will typically have an SD card located just below the head unit under a little plastic cover and that will be the method you'll use to update those systems. Now some of the very old systems um, we're talking like 2011 through 2014 or so use USB sticks and the newest systems from Hyundai um, some of the 2020 and newer systems with the 10 inch screens and also some of the uh, smaller screens use USB sticks yet again, but Hyundai has a nice list on their navigation updater website that tells you exactly which method you will use depending on the vehicle. So the first thing you want to do is obviously download the latest Hyundai navigation updater tool. Now the link will be down in the description below to the website in which you can find the uh, link to download, but they have a version for Windows and for Mac, so you want to choose the correct one for the computer you'll be using. Now once you guys have downloaded the latest map updater tool, you either want to create an account or log in with your previous map updater account. Um, my account stayed the same from even years ago when it was a mail service. So if you guys have performed an update before, you should be able to use the same email and account you have used to log in before. Um, if not, you'll want to go ahead and create an account. Once you have logged in, you'll want to find your vehicle here with the scroll bar and the various models. So we'll be doing an Elantra GT. 2018 and down below here you'll see that it will provide you with what type of navigation system or generation is in your vehicle so in the 2018 Elantra GT this was the first year for the standard class gen 5 navigation system um, there will also be updates for the previous versions such as gen 4 and some of the newer ones of the gen 5w or gen 5 wide just depends on the year your vehicle was made and what generation hyundai was using at the time and just below that, it will also tell you whether you'll be updating your vehicle with a USB stick or an SD card. And as seen with this vehicle, it will be an SD card. So go ahead and select it and hit OK. So once you select your vehicle, you'll be presented with a screen that tells you the storage location in which you'll download the update to. Now, if you have already plugged in your SD card from the vehicle or your USB, you can download it directly to that device or you can download it to your hard drive and transfer the um, information or data at a later date. So I'm going to download it directly to the SD card, which is usually the E drive. Hit next. Obviously, it'll tell you to use you know, a genuine um, SD card that came with the vehicle um, or one that is of uh, class 10 or higher just for the data transfer and everything like that. It'll also ask if you would like to format it. I'm gonna do yes. Well, I wasn't expecting that, but it looks like it wants me to download it to the hard drive of the computer first uh, before transferring it to the SD card. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Obviously, you need to make sure there's enough space on your hard drive, and it says it needs at least 39 gigabytes now one thing you do while you're waiting for the download as this will probably be a pretty lengthy download is uh, down at the bottom under the notification you can go ahead and click on that and it'll actually open a tab for you to um, provide you with information about the specific update in which you're downloading and in this case it will be the November 2021 um, map and software update. 
So on this page, they provide you with the specific new features for the update you are downloading. So in this case, we're downloading November 2021. Some of the new features will be listed, including the new design theme of the Generation 5W expanded to the standard class Gen 5 and premium class Gen 5. So that's why I mentioned earlier in this video, it'll be interesting to see the new UI theme um, that some of the newer Hyundais get will be implemented here on this older Elantra GT since it has a standard class Gen 5 head unit. Uh, I believe the valet mode will be also activated as well as the black navigation theme color here. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if we get all of these features after we perform the update. You can also access the list of eligible vehicles that are um, available for this specific download. Now, like I mentioned, not all of the older systems will get uh, the features listed in the other page, but you can here you can see the complete list of vehicles that um, this update applies to. Again, it looks like they are generation four and newer vehicles. So roughly 2015, 2016 and newer, um, again, depending on which model you have, but you can access all of the information here from this page. Okay, so as we can see, the update just finished. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit copy to SD card. And I'll go ahead and copy all the information that we just downloaded the hard drive over to the SD card. And uh, once this is done, we can take the SD card into the vehicle and start the update there. Okay, it's finally done copying to the SD card. That took a little longer than I would have liked. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and close the program. And we can move on to the in-car installation. So now that we are in the car with our completed SD card, um, you'll want to leave the engine running for the update just so it has enough power for the battery and the battery doesn't die. Um, I don't know if the head units can be bricked if something happens. Um, in the middle of an update but you'd rather not find out so i'd go ahead and recommend leaving the car running and parked um, wherever you're able to in the garage the update should take between 15 and 30 minutes or so um, it might take a little longer depending on which system you have in the past it's been usually between 20 to 30 minutes or so so let's go ahead and start the engine and we'll go ahead and put the sd card in the slot Are you kidding me? Just so it has enough power for the battery and the battery doesn't die. Congratulations, you played yourself. Okay, so here we are several hours later. New battery installed and you want to go ahead and insert the SD card back into the car. Should immediately say uh, preparing navigation then eventually should prompt you for the update. Okay, we'll go into the settings. Hit okay. So then I'm gonna go through the process of verifying and checking the update files, make sure everything's good to go. Um, and then we'll start installing the update on the car. Okay, so it looks like the system restarted for the last time and right off the bat I could see a bunch of font differences with the blue link in the corner. Now the time and everything's a little bit different. So here is our first look. And immediately you can tell all the logos and fonts are different. And that's just part of the new UI here on the regular Gen 5 system. So this matches um, Hyundai's latest uh, vehicles coming out of the factory. And of course here is the new radio screen and as you can tell it looks entirely different. Um, 
first impressions, I don't love it. Is it the worst thing in the world? Mm, probably not. I wonder if they're still recording on any of these favorites or not. Looks like there is since you can rewind. Yeah, there's a new radio screen. There's some new uh, navigation tools up here in the corner. Here's the split screen. As you can see, we have the black theme on because the headlights are on. Here's some of the new icons and such. There's the new valet mode like I mentioned earlier in this video. So yeah, it looks like everything was successful. So I think that's pretty much gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys found this video helpful on how to update your Hyundai's navigation and firmware. If you did, please leave a like for this video. It definitely helps it out. Also, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer them. Um, but yeah, let me know down in the comments how you guys like this new UI and if you plan on doing it to your standard class Gen 5 system. And uh, as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.